My name is John Sutherland. I'm a programme leader here at the LMB. I was trained as an organic chemist at the University of Oxford and then uh, spent a year in the United States, came back to Oxford and was a lecturer in chemistry there and then went to the University of Manchester as a professor of biological chemistry. Then in 2010 I moved to the LMB. We are interested in the origin of life. Uh, our current research is building on earlier research where we showed that we could synthesize some of the building blocks of life. We're now at a point where we've almost synthesized all of the building blocks of life and we're trying to figure out how to string them together to build up higher order structures such as proteins and nucleic acids. So in general terms, how did we get here? My first recollection of science was a trip to a laboratory with my father and I remember seeing experiments being done, I remember the smells and even today I can still remember the same smells, basically. Ever since I was a young boy I was interested in where we came from and I didn't really buy into the, the sort of explanations I was hearing from non-scientific people. So I got interested in science as a way of probing that and then specifically got into chemistry as a, a very, very particular way of probing it. The work we do I find exciting for a variety of reasons. The most exciting thing to me is the fact that what looks complex in biology is really complexity in the eye of the beholder, if you like, because ultimately it seems that everything stems from reactions of hydrogen cyanide and a few related compounds. So what I find exciting is how a few simple compounds uh, can give rise to things that are outwardly complex but as I said, if they are actually inherently favoured to form from hydrogen cyanide, then perhaps they shouldn't be viewed as complex. There are two experiments, really, that moved our research forward. One was an experiment that other people picked up on and were, were perhaps more excited by than we were, and that was about 10, 12 years ago, the synthesis of nucleotides. But more exciting to me is the, is the discovery that we can make these large molecules from very, very simple small molecules just by the use of light and a few simple chemical reagents. Nothing ever goes according to plan. So when research councils and various people ask you to present your research plans for the next five years, it's, it's a bit of a, a sort of a joke in a sense because, you know, if your research is sufficiently exciting it's not been done before, you don't know what's going to happen, so the outcome is never exactly what you expect, so the direction you pursue is never exactly what you expect, so you write these plans for five years and then you do something completely different. My scientific career has been influenced by a number of people. Uh, initially it was influenced by the people who taught me at university, two very inspiring teachers, Peter Atkins and Gordon Lowe in the University of Oxford. And then moving on, I, I was lucky enough to do research with Jack Baldwin, who was the, the leading organic chemist in, in Europe at the time, or certainly in the UK. And also I, I spent time with Jeremy Knowles in the United States. All of them influenced me. But the one who's influenced me more than any, anybody is Albert Eschenmoser at the ETH in, in Zurich, who, who really was 20, 30 years ahead of his time and kick-started serious research on the origin of life by using organic chemistry, high-level organic chemistry, to probe it. I was attracted to the prospect of coming to the LMB because of posit many positive aspects of LMB life, this amazing research culture, the ability to just dedicate yourself to research. And it was also an opportunity to, to, you know, say farewell to some of the things about universities which I found frustrating, you know, the, the underfunding and the administrative chores in universities. Having said that, I miss the teaching associated with university and the vibrancy of the universities. We have our own vibrancy here, but it's a different culture. The skills that make a scientist are, I think, are varied, and I think I would recommend that anybody who's aspiring to be a scientist play to their strengths, because if you're good at something and you can find a way of turning that into science, then you will, you, you're more likely to be successful than trying to imagine and trying to build a skill that you don't actually possess, that others have told you you need. 
So in my case, I have a good memory and I've tried to sort of use that in my research. I think if I was lucky, I would have other skills as, as well. Uh, but I think, as I said, you know, you have to play the, play the hand you're dealt, so to speak. In terms of scientific breakthroughs that, are, that I'd like to make, I'm quite happy with the ones we have made. Uh, I would like to make some more before I retire. I think that the origin of life will always be seen by people who are not studying it as something which is going to be a sort of you know, breakthrough moment and suddenly someone's going to announce we have synthesized life. But I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be incremental. Science has this tendency to be incremental. There are press announcements along the way, of course, but essentially it's incremental. And I'm quite happy if we go down as being one of the people that have laid the foundations for what turns out ultimately to be a, a sort of magnificent structure, uh, the scientific explanation for the origin of life, then I'll be very happy. Of course, I'd also be happy if we turned out to be one of the peoples who put in the, the finishing touches of that structure. But contributing to the construction of this scientific edifice, which explains how life started, is what I find really exciting and important. Interviewing people past or present about uh, research, well, I'm lucky that I've met lots of uh, living scientists and I've learned lots from talking to them, so I'd opt for someone or some people from the past. R.B. Woodward was uh, arguably the greatest ever organic chemist, and I think it would be fun to have a, a chat with him. And Charles Darwin, of course, would be someone who would be very interesting to talk to, to see what his take was. Uh, now that all this time has elapsed since he first started writing about evolution, what would he think about chemical evolution? I like to think that if he existed now, if he lived now, that he'd be doing chemistry of the origin of life, because that's where the action is now. But I wouldn't know until I'd spoken to him. Would anything I do surprise people by way of my job? I don't think so. I think people have this impression of scientists working away practically in the bench. Maybe they'd be a little bit surprised that I spend most of my time sitting in front of a computer and don't actually do any experiments. I'm lucky enough to have a team of people who are very talented to do those experiments for me. So I direct them. And I think perhaps people have a, a feeling that uh, even those of us who are a bit older in science actually do experiments when most of us, most of us don't. The biggest challenge in what I do is trying to raise money and engage the brightest young people and excite them and try and attract them into the subject. So those are two perennial challenges, uh, funding research and getting the brightest minds to, to join me uh, in doing that research. Well, I've worked throughout my career on the origin of RNA, so COVID has been uh, proof that RNA can have a very powerful effect on people and the world. And so 30 kilobases of RNA that the virus possesses has wreaked havoc throughout humanity. And I think partly because the LNB has handled it so well, it's not really adversely affected me or my research. It's been a shame to see the damage it's caused, but it's also been amazing to see the response that science has produced to combat it. COVID-19 has allowed people to see that science can help them in times of emergency. And I think people who are smart will think on that and will realise that actually science helps them in ordinary periods of time as well. So I think it's, it's, it's been an opportunity for science to show itself at its best. Uh, I think there are, of course, other aspects of science which are not so well received publicly. But I think in general, the pandemic has been, I hate to say it, the pandemic's been good for science. I think all of science contributes to human society in, in, simply in the sense that it's, it's knowledge and, and humans are inquisitive. Uh, creatures and so contributing to knowledge is important but one of the things humans are most inquisitive about is where they came from you know, why they're here where they came from and so I think studying the origin of life contributes to that I, I think the other aspect which is perhaps a little bit longer term is the fact that medicine and, 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 and healthcare is all about 
biology when it goes wrong. And if you want to understand why it's gone wrong or how it's gone wrong, you need to understand it in detail. And if you want to understand anything in detail, you need to know its history. And the history of, of life includes the origin of life. So a proper understanding of biology, which will allow medicine to operate to its greatest effect, will require an understanding of the origin of life and the early evolution of life. So it's a long t that's a long-term benefit, but a benefit it, it, it is. My scientific career has gone along fairly normal lines, I think, so it hasn't been terribly different to what I envisaged. Of course, if you'd asked me as a student, would I end up at the LMB, I would, wouldn't have known that I would. But if you'd asked me, would I hope to end up in a, a good research institution, I would have said yes. So, and the LMB is certainly a good research institution, arguably one of the best. So it's not particularly different to what I would have imagined. Looking back now uh, at the science I've done and the career I've had and thinking about advice I would offer to younger people, I think two pieces of advice, one that I've mentioned already, play to your strengths. The other is only do it if you enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it, then you won't have the energy to commit to it when it's difficult. So find something you enjoy, use your strengths to the best of your ability and have fun. I think in general terms, we'd like to understand how to take building blocks, make them into bigger structures and have those bigger structures then act synergistically uh, to produce higher order behavior and how, how that works and how that's fueled by chemical energy is a, a very interesting question which I would love to contribute to, to solving.